There we go. Ooh, that one's got some pull to it. <laughs> I wonder if it's a long-nosed pigeon fish. I think I'm just gonna gut them. Leave the head, scales, skin, everything on. And then I'm gonna brine them. Oh, they look good and they smell good. It is one beautiful day on my new boat. The first episode on my new boat, you guys. Um, I'm gonna have a boat reveal coming up soon. Um, it's gonna be, you know, kind of what my new boat's all about, what I like about it, um, what's different than my other fish tank. And I'm calling this the FT2, baby. That's what I'm calling it. Um, it's bigger, it's got a few more amenities and uh, can't wait to show you some of those in another video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So first fishing video from the new boat. So I figured I would do a special video and this one's gonna be a catch clean and smoke video baby what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some panfish i've already got some trout from out in colorado and i've been saving them in the freezer for smoking them sometime this year and uh frankly kind of forgot about them and just thought about it and said you know what i need to get those trout out and i need to get smoking on those bad boys so um that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna catch a couple more panfish to add to it. I'm gonna clean them very similarly to the trout, and then I'm gonna smoke panfish. Well, first I'm gonna brine both the trout and the panfish, and I'll show you how to do that as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and smoke them on my new pellet grill, and we'll see how they turn out. We'll do kind of a comparison. Um, hopefully I can get a nice bluegill and a crappie, and then we'll have some trout of different varieties to compare as well. So. Welcome to potentially the world's first catch, clean, and smoke. Probably not. There's probably somebody that's done it, but it's my first one, so I'm glad that you're here. And my first one from El Nubota. Hey, look who's here. Oh, that brought the music. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. Let's go fishing now. I'm going to just set up with a panfish rig right now. Just the good old-fashioned one I always use. We left these out in the dang sun you guys don't leave these gulps out in the sun because what happens is they get soft and when they're soft they don't last for as long and you just wasted money so there's two jars of wasted money money for the old uh, fish brain but i'm still gonna use them there's a fish well i found him he tried to mess with me he could not this doesn't feel like a keeper but it is the first fish Looks like a sunny. It is. A little sunny. Well, I know I'm in the right spot where there's some little sunnies. There's some big sunnies and some crappies. So, thanks for being the first fish and see you later, buddy. There's a fish. Now, that's a little better one. And it looks like it's probably a crappie. I don't know if it's a keeper. But it's a good sign, you guys. Very good sign that's what I'm after. I, I really want a good size crappie and I want a good size sunny for this video. This is not quite the size I'm looking for. Not quite a 10 inch, but still pretty as heck. I do love me some crappies. You send back your big old mama, right? Okay. Since you may be one of the last ones I put back, let's do the slow-mo release with you. You ready? Here we go. Bye. Well, nice to see some crappies out here. I knew they'd be here. They like these same areas as the uh, as the sunnies. I find them together all the time. One of the reasons I like using these gulp minnows is because it seems to weed through a lot of the smaller sunnies, even though the first fish I caught was a small sunny. But a lot of times when you get a bite, it's going to be a bigger sunny instead of a, a smaller one when you get one on the minnow. Um, and of course, for me, crappies are much more bitey on the gulp minnow than they are on pretty much anything else, and certainly more than worms. I don't ever use worms for crappies. Do any of you use worms for crappies? Because I know when I first started fishing, I thought, oh yeah, you gotta use worms for crappies, and 
and I'd even like talk about using them in the winter and people looked at me like I was crazy and now I look at the same thing like it's crazy. So, what do you do? Do you catch them on a worm? I, I just don't. Oh, you son of gun. Why you do to me what you think you should do to others when you know it's me and you shouldn't do that to me? I thought we had a deal. I thought there was like a deal here. Like a, like a you bite, I put you back if you're not big enough deal. Come on, come on, don't break the deal. Hopefully some of those big ones make a mistake soon. I'd like to get about two, I think. Two crappies, maybe three. And then uh, maybe a couple of sunnies, a couple of big sunnies. I think that would make a really good smoked meal. There we go. That's a good one right there. You did exactly how I asked. Thank you, sir. I really enjoyed working with you in this one. Hopefully, this is a keeper. Oh boy, it got swiped at by a big fish. There's a big fish swiping at it. Oh my gosh. Or it is a big fish. It is a big fish too. <laughs> I swear a northern or something went after it right over there. I saw a huge, a huge uh, splash. Wow. That is a pretty crap right there. That's our first keeper. That one's going in the tank. That one is gonna get smoked. You getting smoked, boy. Let's turn on that aerator. Remember the tank is, oh, it's not there anymore. Now the tank is right here. This is the one I've been using. Check this out. Nice and deep, holds a lot of fish, a lot of room. I like it. There we go. Ooh, that one's got some pull to it. <laughs> I wonder if it's a long-nosed pigeon fish. We're sure gonna find out, ain't we? You got some extra. Yeah. Hi there. You're not quite the size I want. And you took my bait, you little son of a gun. But the sunnies are getting bigger. That's a good thing. That's a really nice, pretty fish. I'm gonna put that one back. Look at how fast that thing left. Wow. Bye, buddy. There we go. That's it. That set in, that hook set was in, and that's in. He's a crappie. It's a decent crappie, too. Wow. He didn't fight with anything. But is definitely probably a keeper. In fact, I think it is a keeper. For sure. You know I'm going to measure it, but that's a nice looking fish. Really good looking fish. Put him on the board and stretch him out, see what happens. Oh yeah, he's a 10. He goes in. Oh, this is a big fish. Or at least it got into something, something happened. Oh, this is a good one right here. Let me see, is this my keeper sunfish? Oh no, it's a big crappie. Look at this thing, holy cow. My goodness. This is definitely gonna be one that we're gonna put on the smoker. What a nice fish. Man, this is, what a beauty. Gonna go in the tank with this one, gonna, gonna go on the smoker with this one, and really, I, I'm actually probably gonna just catch some sunfish later with my family and add it in so that we can see it for the cleaning and, uh, and smoking and eating portion. But um, I tell you what, I can't wait to smoke these fish and see how they turn out. So stick around, we're gonna do that together. It's time to get into cleaning some fish. But before I do that, um, what I'm thinking about doing is actually taking these fish and cutting their lower jaw and then pulling the guts out kind of like i saw a guy do in colorado so that is what i'm hoping to accomplish with these guys right here we're gonna do some smoked fish i'm gonna get my table up here work on these fish a little bit here Okay. 
All right, this thing works great. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just gotta watch out so you don't overfill the bucket. Okay, guys, what I am doing today, this is my idea for how to, you know, how to smoke these is I think I'm just gonna gut them, leave the head, scales, skin, everything on, and then I'm gonna brine them. I'm gonna try and do it, like I said, just kind of like Jesse did on that video. So cut it from there up. Whew. Or there down a little, I guess, you know? See, but I'm wondering, like, he kind of cut this one spot. Is this the spot? This is the spot that he cut, I think, right here. Yeah, like right under the chin. So he, like, got under there with his knife like this. Cut that. All right. And then that became, oh yeah, that's gonna work, you guys. I just gotta get through this part, which is kinda tough to get through and has some yuck. Gross, gross, dirty. Let's see, come on, oh, there, I got it. I gotta just go through that kinda tough spot. Move it, okay. There we go. Is this what he did? <laughs> not really. <laughs> All right, well, we'll try the next one too. You know, we're not scared. He's good and washed out here. I think that guy's about as washed out as we're gonna get him. I think that's gonna be good. Yeah, I'm gonna use a lot of water doing this. So better be careful. Innards gotta go in there. Oh, there's this little crappie heart. Oh, you guys. The heart of a crappie. Dude, that's cool. Figured I'd bring you in on this part. Um, I've put six cups of warm water in here. By the way, the uh, recipe for this brine that I'm using is going to be in the description below. And then I've got uh, about three ounces of salt about, I don't know, two tablespoons of garlic. And then now I'm adding the brown sugar. And I can never remember if you're always supposed to press it down for brown sugar or not. So I'm just gonna kinda mostly press it down and see what happens. I'm trying to get it to the 12. I think that looks pretty good. I'm doing 10 total fish. I'm doing well, let's go take a look. I'll show you. I'm doing four trout from Colorado. Right? And then six fish from the lake here. They look great. Fish look good. I can't wait to smoke those. So I'm having some difficulty, you guys, as to whether I'm going to actually scale these fish or not. I kind of want to leave the scales on and just smoke them that way because... I think if I brine them right enough, you know, in this brine and smoke them well enough, they should be fine. But who knows? I, just, I think what I've kind of settled on is I'm going to brine, or excuse me, I'm going to scale half of them. So scaling about half of them and then not scaling the other half and seeing how they, how they hold up to that. Do you have the... Whiskey, thank you. Whiskey. Okay, I am going to mix in the dry ingredients with the warm water. Oh, there they go. And then as I'm doing that, or while that's kind of settling into there, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the soy sauce. I've gotta do about a cup and a half of soy sauce. Because the original recipe calls for a cup and I'm going about one and a half times the original recipe. So there's about a cup and a half. And put that in there. Yeah. Now we'll mix that all up really, really good. And then what you wanna do is you wanna let this settle and well not settle you want to mix it up and you want to let it cool 
Once it cools down, you want to add it to your fish and let them brine for, you know, six, eight hours, something like that. Some people do it overnight. Um, you don't want to get too long on the brine, but you also don't want to have uh, too short of a brine period because you want this brine to really penetrate the fish and help add to the smoky flavor that you're going to get. While this is cooling off, I think I am, I think I've made the decision that I am going to go ahead and scale those panfish that I have and make sure that they are, you know, that, that's, what, that's what a lot of people say to do. There's kind of varying opinions. So hopefully scaling them is the right thing to do. Time to get out some fish and get them scaled, washed up, and in the brine. Remember these from Colorado? If you didn't get a chance to see the episode where I caught these beautiful trout, I might caught some of them as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of those episodes down right now uh, in the description for you. One of them is uh, in the North Platte River in Colorado and one is uh, up on the 11 mile reservoir. So check those out. I'm gonna open up these trout. They haven't been open since Colorado. So we're gonna open them up. Give them a quick rinse. Make sure they're all good to go. Set them aside. Some nice brown trout here. That's a nice one right there. One's gonna be some good smoked trout. So I'm going to pat these dry a little bit with some paper towels just to kind of make them a little more receptive to the uh, brine. I think just patting them dry is good enough because they're going to be in this and the little bit of water that's on them is not going to affect the brine quality. So I'm going to get... My measuring cup here. What I want to do is kind of cover these fish with this brine and then I'm going to seal them up in that baggie. So there we go. Well that's nice. That is good. Let's see how that looks to cover them completely. Is that going to get them brined? I'm gonna do it if I leave them like that. I think I gotta get a little more in there. Make sure that's all the way sealed up. Oh yeah. That looks nice. Okay, I'm gonna put that in the fridge to let it just stay nice and cool and let it brine. Then we're gonna get the, uh, make sure we get the crappies and all that done as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, those are on the brine. Well, it's time to get the uh, smoker going here for the fish. I've had it brining for basically 24 hours. So I'm guessing probably been brining long enough. Let's hope. It's kind of dripping in my fridge here. I got a mess to clean up, but it looks good. I'm gonna set it up here. I got the smoker going, I'm just trying to get it down to temperature. I put it up too, a little too high at first. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bowl of water, put it right in the middle of the smoker so it keeps it nice and moist. And then um, here's our fish. So I'm gonna start wiping these off and getting them all good to go. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. 
So you definitely want to pat these dry after you're done with brining them. You don't need to like take them all the way dry, but pat them dry, right? You know, these are going to be wonderful, these trout. This is like most everybody's favorite way to have trout is smoked, so it should be really good. Sunfish, crappies. Pat these off as well, a little bit. Make sure a lot of the excess is off there. There we go. Isn't that awesome? Look at those. I know. These are going to be our friends. Good. I'm gonna put this in the middle so it keeps everything nice and hydrated. These are getting smoked right now. Is what this is. Smoke yep. Smoker. I want. Is that? Is that just water? Yep. Just water. Okay. I want you put water in there so it doesn't get all dried out. <laughs> Those are going to be legit. I know. I'm excited for them. Well, there's our whole smoker full of fish, you guys. Isn't that awesome? Check it out. Let's get these bad boys going, huh? Just getting back in here. Had kind of a busy day out. And uh, I don't want to say I forgot about these, but I was giving them some extra time. Let's just talk, talk like that. Oh, they look good and they smell good. Oh yeah, those are good. Okay, now I'm gonna take them off. All right. Power this down. Unplug it. There we go. We got some trout. So I'm putting these in the fridge to cool off because I don't want to eat them until they're nice and cool. So we'll cool them off and all of us are going to try them a bit later. Okay, we're back from a day on the lake. I'm going to be doing some cleaning of some fish soon. Check out a nice walleye in there and a couple crappies. I wasn't even going to keep any fish this afternoon, but when a nice walleye shows up, it's time to keep some fish. So. Let's go check on these smoked fish. I got some people coming over to eat smoked fish. Before they get here, I kind of want to do a little taste test myself. So, welcome to my shed. And welcome to smoked fish. Yeah. It's all nice and cooled down. Looks great. Okay. Well, let me try a little bit. Broke the head right off that one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at how nice that looks. That looks beautiful. Okay. So we are gonna try some of the trout. This looks amazing. Okay. I mean I know I'm supposed to say it's good right but this is really really good oh my gosh the trout is good wow okay so we'll save some of that for the other people so this is a little sunny right here how am i gonna i think we're gonna have to set you down again everybody you're gonna have to Watch me break this thing's head off again. See? Head broken. Here's the filet of the sunny. Nice. 
Oh, you got it in my mouth because you want to try it. Mm-hmm. Really good. I don't know what the difference is going to be between the scaled and the non-scaled. That one was non-scaled. Or excuse me, that one was scaled. Wow. That's some good fish. That is really good. Okay. So I'm going to try one more fish. I'm going to try the crappie that wasn't scaled. So we'll get that one's head off. Because that seems to be the, the way you do it. And then kind of go into some of this meat here. Ooh, it's kind of dry and crumbly a little bit. Mmm. I pulled off. I said mmm before it hit my mouth thing. Mmm. Okay. Copy. Now it's got the scales on. To me, that's fantastic. This has been a great episode. I enjoyed making it. I enjoyed having you here and kind of showing a review around my place a little bit. And, uh, got some people coming over to enjoy the rest of this smoked fish with me, but, um, they're going to have to hurry because there's uh, not very much of it and it's very, very good. You know what I say? Well, before I say it, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for subscribing. Make sure you follow me on the other formats if you can, Facebook and TikTok. It all helps to uh, keep me fishing full time. And in the meantime, Fish Brain Chain, out.